what is a biblical worldview? My goal has been to provide logical answers to much of what the skeptics and scoffers throw at me concerning evolution and origins. The Bible gives us the true history of the universe, and it is only in light of that history that we can interpret the evidence of the present, explain death and suffering or offer true answers for the problems of mankind. In this, I want to retrace that history, which gives us the foundation for a truly biblical worldview that allows us to explain all that we see. The history as recorded in the Bible has been attacked by increasingly secular culture. As a result, recent generations have been brought up to see the Bible as just a book of interesting stories and moralistic teaching but has no connection to reality. This limited viewpoint helps explain why there are so many questions about how the Bible can explain dinosaurs, fossils, death, and suffering, and many other topics that relate to our real world. This is an outline of the major events of the past, and even the future, the seven seas of history, that are foundational to the Bible's important message and demonstrate how the Bible connects to the real world. Creation God created the heavens, and the earth, and all that is in them in a week over 6,000 years ago. His completed creation was very good, and all the original animals, including dinosaurs, and the first two humans, Adam and Eve, ate only plants. I understand that the T-Rex had very sharp teeth. But the panda has sharp teeth and eats bamboo. If we think about pre-flood conditions, the plants and trees were a lot bigger. Perhaps the T-Rex needed those sharp teeth to eat very hard pumpkins, or chew on tree branches. Life was perfect, and not yet affected by the curse. Death, violence, sickness, thorns, and fear had no part in the original creation. After he was finished creating, God rested, or stopped, from his work, although he continues to uphold creation. His creation of all things in six days and resting on the seventh set a pattern for our week, which he designed for us to follow. The science of information theory confirms that first statement of the Bible, in the beginning God. DNA is the molecule of heredity part of a staggeringly complex system, more information dense than that in the most efficient supercomputer. Since the information in our DNA can only come from a source of greater information, or intelligence, there must have been something other than matter in the beginning. This other source must have no limit to its intelligence from which all things have come. The Bible tells us there is a source. God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Since God has no beginning and no end, and knows all, it makes sense that God is the source of the information we see all around us. This fits with real science, just as we would expect. In Genesis, God explains that He created things to reproduce after their kinds. And this is what we observe today. Great variation within different kinds, dogs, cats, horses, reptiles, elephants, etc., but not one kind changing into another, as good to you. Evolutionism requires Corruption After God completed his perfect creation, he told Adam that he could eat from any tree in the Garden of Eden. Except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He warned Adam that death would be the punishment for disobedience. Instead of listening, Adam chose to rebel, eating the fruit from the tree. Adam died spiritually and eventually died in his body. Because God must punish sin, he sacrificed animals to make coverings for Adam and Eve, and he sent the first couple from the garden, mercifully denying them access to the tree of life so that they would not live forever in their sinful state. Adam's son ushered death, sickness, and sorrow into the once perfect creation. God also pronounced a curse on the world, changing it completely. As a result, the world that we now live in, is merely a junkyard. We see the results of this corruption all around us in the form of carnivorous animals, mutations, sickness, disease, and death. The good news is that, rather than leave his precious handiwork without hope, God graciously promised to one day send a Redeemer who would bring back his people from the curse of sin. Catastrophe As the descendants of Adam and Eve married and filled the earth with offspring, their wickedness was great. God judged their sin by sending a global flood to destroy all men, animals, and creatures that moved along the ground, and birds of the air. By God's grace, only Noah and his family were saved from the watery catastrophe. 
There was plenty of room in the huge ark, for tens of thousands of animals. Even dinosaurs. The average dinosaur was only the size of a sheep. And Noah didn't have to take fully grown adults. Noah actually needed only about 16,000 animals on the ark to represent all the distinct kinds of land-dwelling animals. This earth-covering event has left its mark even today. From the thousands of feet of sedimentary rock found around the world to the billions of dead things buried in rock layers, the flood reminds us even today that our righteous God hates sin, while the ark reminds us that He provides a way of salvation from sin's punishment. The rainbows we experience today reminds us of God's promise never again to destroy the earth with water. But if the flood were only local, then God has repeatedly broken His promise since we continue to experience local floods today. Confusion. After the flood, God commanded Noah and his family, the only humans left in the world to spread out and fill the earth. However, people once again disobeyed God's command and built a tower which they hoped would keep them together, around 100 years after the flood waters dropped down. God brought a multiplicity of languages in place of the common language that people shared, causing them to spread out over the earth. The several different languages created suddenly at Babel could each subsequently give rise to many more. Languages gradually change. So when a group of people breaks up into several groups that no longer interact, after a few centuries they may each speak a different but related language. Today, we have thousands of languages but fewer than 20 language families. All the tribes and nations in the world today have descended from these various groups. Despite what you may have been led to believe about our seeming superficial differences, we really are all one blood. Descendants of Adam and Eve through Noah and his family, and all therefore are in need of salvation from sin. God created Adam and Eve with the ability to produce children with a variety of different characteristics. This ability was passed on through Noah and his family. As the people scattered, they took with them different amounts of genetic information for certain characteristics, like height, amount of pigment for hair, and skin color, etc. A recent Human Genome Project supports this biblical teaching that there is indeed only one biological race of humans. As one report says, quote, it is clear that what is called race, it reflects just a few continuous traits determined by a tiny fraction of our genes, end of quote. It explained various shades of one skin color, not different colors and how the distinct people groups like American Indians or Australian Aborigines came about because of the event of the Tower of Babel. The creation and flood legends of these peoples, from all around the world, nearly 300 of them, also confirm the Bible's anthropology to be true, 